Hello friend, how are you doing today? My name is Mary, this is Happily Ever Esh, and today I want to talk about five nonfiction books that I want to read before 2020 comes to an end. In years past, I read a decent amount of nonfiction and I really enjoyed it, but last year and this year I've kind of fallen off the nonfiction train a bit. I've read some, most of it has been memoirs in 2020 for me, which is not my preferred nonfiction genre. Um, I have enjoyed a few few of the ones that I've read. Um, one is one of my favorite books I've read this year, so it hasn't been bad to try some more memoirs, but I have been reading a political biography, Pelosi by Molly Ball, and it has reinvigorated me for my love of non-fiction, especially on audio. I'm so wrapped up into this narrative biography story of Pelosi and really policy in Congress in the last 20, 30 years is really what this book is looking at. And so I decided to take a look at my shelves, pull some books that I'm really wanting to read and share them with you all. Two of them I own the digital audiobook copy, which is new for me. I don't own a lot of audiobooks, but I have joined Libro FM, which is a audiobook subscription service that caters to supporting local and independent bookstores, which I absolutely adore and can absolutely put my dollar behind. They'll be linked down below. I've mentioned them in all of my videos. Um, not all of my videos. I've mentioned them in quite a few videos just because I'm loving the service. I just wanted to put a little plug in because I think what they're doing is wonderful, especially right now when independent stores, local stores, um, small businesses can be hit a little harder just due to COVID and just kind of the economic moment we're in. So anytime I can give them a plug, I will. I think they're a phenomenal service. So check them out in the description box below. And without further ado, let's just get into the five books I hope to read in 2020. So the first two, like I said, are digital audiobooks. The first one being The Warmth of Other Suns. And this is written by Isabel Wilkerson. This won the Pulitzer Prize. It is almost a 23 hour long audiobook, which I think intimidates me just a little bit. But honestly, with my work picking back up and more travel is added with that, it's just kind of a natural part of my job. I'm listening to audiobooks much more and I think would be a great time to get sucked into a really long one. I could honestly probably finish it in a week or two um, depending on how much driving I'm doing um, and so I don't want to be intimidated by the almost day long length of this book because I think it's going to be so well worth the time. This book follows the migration that happened really from the beginning of the 1900s to like the mid 70s of the huge numbers of black Americans who moved from the south to the north and I've just heard such great things about this of the narrative style which I really tend to like in my nonfiction. also I think it's an important story of America that I want to understand and know more about and it's one that's been on my list for a really long time my library um, only had the CD form of the audiobooks which you cannot listen to in a faster speed so that always kind of turned me off to listening to it but I finally was able to purchase it through my Libro FM subscription and it's one that I really want to prioritize this year and read. I've been enjoying learning more about different parts of American history, American stories, American politics. It's been something that I've been very interested in this year um, and so I want to read this one. I like that this book looks at personal stories along with like the greater history. I'm really drawn to that kind of storytelling, especially in nonfiction. I love the personal story, the personal connection, and I can't wait to give this one a try. It's been so well received, so well loved and acclaimed, and so I I just, I need to read it, okay? The next book is a pretty new release in nonfiction and it's called Sea People, The Puzzle of Polynesia by Christina Thompson. I am so intrigued by this book. I've heard so much praise, especially in the booktube prize about this. This is kind of sold as an intellectual detective looking back story of obviously the area of Polynesia and how the people got there and really just trying to figure out 
how they ended up where they did in these set of islands. Christina Thompson is interested in learning more about this story because her husband and her sons are direct descendants of the people who took to the seas and went to inhabit Polynesia and so she's just very interested and drawn to the story. I've heard nothing but good things that it's a compellingly told nonfiction but that it's so well researched. I I just cannot wait to read this one. It sounds like it's gonna kind of fill that mystery itch that I really have with a lot of my stories and I just can't wait to see how she does it because to me this just seems like an, an insurmountable ocean to forge if you will with my uh, metaphor. <laughs> But yes, I'm so excited to see how she handles this topic and this nonfiction, and then it helps that it's received such pr good praise from the booktube community. All right, and now for some physical books that I own that I probably will end up listening on audio. That's just my preferred way to consume nonfiction. I have Leadership Lessons from the Presidents for Turbulent Times by Doris Kearns Goodwin. Doris Kearns Goodwin is a very well-known and well-acclaimed historian. In particular, she's done some biographies of presidents that have been very well received, and I believe this is more of a compilation looking at different presidents, different times, how they handled it, and I think really drawing a contrast to our current president in the United States and his handling of the many crises that have come out and even more so now after this book has been published. I can't wait to read this one and to experience some of Doris Kearns Goodwin. I want to read some of her biographies. In particular, I'm very interested in the one that focuses on Abraham Lincoln and then there's also one that focuses on FDR and Eleanor Roosevelt in World War II. Um, but I think this will be a good kind of introduction to her work. It's one of her most, her newer releases and I just I want to read her and I want to read this book and it's it seems like a fitting time <laughs> so this I'm gonna look for on audio like I said but I do have the physical copy it always amazes me like you're like wow what a chunk of a book but then like actual text is doo -doo -doo. Much, which is like 368 pages so much less daunting than the chunk of a book it looks like the one that I feel the most urgency in reading and will probably be the next nonfiction I pick is The Woman's Hour The Great Fight to Win the Vote by Elaine Weiss we are coming up on the hundred year anniversary of the woman's right to vote it's too important to um, not take some time to remember the women who fought for my right to vote in this country. Um, and so yes, this kind of details the, the time leading up to getting that amendment passed to our constitution. Um, again, I have this on audio, it's saved and ready to go for the month of August. And I, I'm really interested to see how she, he, she deals with this. I also have another book that's much thicker and I think focuses more on Europe um, and that's Rise Up Women, um, but to celebrate um, the 100 years in America, I want to read this one. I got it at a thrift store, was so excited to pick it up for a couple dollars. And so yes, this one, like I said, is my main priority on this pile just because of there's a little bit of time sensitive urgency. Read it before August and the anniversary passes me up. So I'm very excited to own this and to read it. And then last but certainly not least, I have a book of essays and that's The Fire This Time, A New Generation Speaks About Race and this is edited by Jasmine Ward. If you're new to my channel, you might not know, but Sing Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward is my favorite book that I've read so far in 2020. I adored it. Um, it was heavy and hard, but beautifully written and compellingly told and I'm very interested to see the works that she's chosen. Obviously she didn't write all of the essays and poems in here. She compiled them. I'm very interested to pick this up and then I don't own The Fire um, Next Time by James Baldwin but it's one I want to read in tandem with this. Um, so I haven't decided if I'll read it first or after. I I don't have a strong opinion either way but I want to read both this year. But um, yeah I think Obviously, this is a timely read for many reasons, but I've owned it for a while and I think it's time to finally pick this one up. This one I probably will read physically so I can take notes, underline 
um, will probably, as it's an essay collection, read it a little slower. The back says, 18 influential thinkers wrestle with the past, present, and future of American race relations and the black experience. This is an essential collection for anyone who wishes to confront the truth of our nation. Yes. Absolutely. So that one's going on the nonfiction pile as well. So that's it. Some chunkers. I for sure is going to take some time to get through, but I feel very dedicated, at least in this particular moment in time, to read some more nonfiction in 2020. And I still have plenty of time to do that. Um, so yes, making a little goal. I hope to be able at the end of the year to do a wrap up and tell you all my thoughts, feelings, opinions on these books. Nonfiction tends to be some of my most highly rated so I just need to bite the bullet and do it you know read some more nonfiction I want more in my life in 2020 thank you so much for watching I'd love to know if you've read any of these books if you have any thoughts opinions I'd love to know if you have any nonfiction books that you're interested in or you think I might be interested in I'd love to chat about all of the things down in the comments below thank you so much for watching please like this video if you enjoyed please subscribe if you would like to see more bookish content from me I try to post on Tuesdays and Thursdays and I've been somewhat consistent and then also I pop in on Fridays for the occasional Friday read Again, thanks so much for watching. I think that's it. I'm gonna stop rambling. Have a great rest of your day, week, month, year. Goodbye. <laughs>